Okay guys, here we go into uh, what's going to be our fourth video for the water bottle top and uh, things are moving along pretty well. Um, just taking a look at what we've done so far, we've gotten a pretty good overall for most of the surfacing on this and it's just going to be down to adding some of the details now. So the next thing we got to do is add these side cuts that you see on the water bottle itself. So they're, um, they act for two reasons. One, they're grip, and then they're also, uh, you know, like a like an aesthetic thing too. So I struggled with this quite a bit, and I came up with a strategy that I think works pretty well. Um, so let's get into it, and I'll show you how I did it, okay? Um, first thing we'll do is we'll just pop over into the four panel view here, and I'm gonna go to my top view, and we're gonna work off the top view. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a circle, and I'm gonna put it right at the zero point, and then I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to pay really specific attention to this edge right here where this where this uh, this fillet ends and then I'm going to try to come in about two millimeters I'll turn off the grid snap so that I'm not hindered by that and I'm just going to go actually just a little bit more than two millimeters in and then you can see how my cursor is rotating the center point of that circle so I'm just going to hold shift so that I know that that's right there and we'll go about two millimeters and a half, something like that, in from the edge here. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is just uh, I'm going to take a polyline, okay? And I'm going to go about, let's say, about three millimeters over and just draw an angled line out like that. And I want it to overlap over the entire model, plus I want it to overlap the circle that we just drew. Take another polyline like this, and this one I'm going to do another three millimeters over. And this one I'm going to do a different angle. So this is, I'd say, like a pretty shallow angle. This one I want to do a much wider angle, something like that. And the reason why I'm doing them like this is because I've just been, you know, looking at the actual product that I'm trying to replicate what I see. So um, again, same situation, overlapping over that circle. Okay. All right, good. Now then, uh, the next thing that I want to do is actually, I'm just using these as a guide. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a control point curve and I'm going to go click one and I'm going to come in and just follow along right here. And I'm going to go one and I'm going to go one, two, three. And I do three points to get around that corner. I want to do a rounded edge right here. And then I'm going to go one in the middle. And then I'm going to do one, two, three to get around that corner. And then I'm going to pull way out here and just do one more click just like that. Okay. And so this is going to give us a nice clean curve that kind of mimics the shape here. And um, hopefully it'll give us what we want. Okay. So follow along with me there. Another option to get this curve is to trim these two uh, curves, these three curves together like this. You would go trim like this, take your trim tool, and you would use this and this as the cutting object. Trim away the excess here and here. Hit escape, drop the trim tool. Do the right mouse button to turn it back on. Then use this as a cutting object trim off these little tails like this escape and then you can use the fillet curves command to come in here and fillet those curves and I have a two millimeter uh, curve set to that okay all right so that's another option that we have here in case we don't want to use that so the the actual CV curve that we drew there so Now I can just kind of compare the two and tell which one I like better. I'm going to go here to uh, the show edit points on button and just see if I want to edit this a little bit more and just see if I can mimic this a little bit. Excuse me again while you sit and watch me uh, just editing points inside Rhino. It's I know that's quite boring but Unfortunately, that's that's the name of the game as far as Rhino's concerned. So, okay, all right. Now, the benefit of actually laying out CVs and editing these points yourself is that you're going to get one clean curve, whereas the previous curve that was trimmed together with three different pieces and then filleted, um, 
if that's not joined together, it can show up as several different pieces. And sometimes that can add weird seams to your model. And sometimes it can uh, kind of push you down a road you may not want to go down. So it's always good to have, if you can, to have a, a single control point curve available uh, when, when possible. So we'll try both and we'll see what happens, okay? Okay, good, like that. All right. So um, let's just go ahead and let's just put one of these. Let's take this guy that we drew with the single control point curve. And we'll put it on an extra layer right here. And we'll just kind of hold on to it for a minute and see how it goes. Um, we'll even hide it for a second. Let's start off here and see how this curve treats us, okay? Okay, so let's go to perspective view and see exactly where is that curve sitting. All right, so you can see it's sitting right there on our ground plane since we drew it in the top view, okay? And now I just want to use the gumball to just pull it up over my model like that. There you go. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this curve and pull it down and push it over to get the effect that we're looking for for this cap. So I'm going to do a control C and a control V. And once I see the gumball pop up again, I know that I've duplicated it. The other way to know it's duplicated is if you click on it and you get the selection menu with two curves sitting there. There's that. Okay, so take the second one, go to your front view. Okay, pull this thing down until it's about, about this far down. And I'm looking at the distance from here to here. Okay, so not a very accurate maneuver there guys don't worry about it just pick a distance you like but follow along if you can okay let's look in perspective again and just kind of see what we're up to the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to push this curve out so that it actually sticks out past the wall of the bottle cap okay and what we're going to do just a little sneak preview we're going to loft between these two and we're going to get a surface that's going to dive through the model and then stick out the bottom here and then we'll trim it away okay so I'm moving this piece this is going to be the the end that we're going to loft to so I want it to get as close as possible to this wall here without going into it I want it to still stick out so you can see how I'm kind of just watching it from all angles trying to pay attention to where it sits there we go maybe out just a little bit more and this might take a couple moves. We're going to try to run the loft and see how it sits, and then we'll back off and do it again and do it again and see how it goes. Okay, good. Now the other thing to do, we'll go to front view here. You can see how these two curves are lined up straight with each other because we use the gumball to pull it down. I'm just going to take this guy here, and I'm just going to slide it over about that much, and we're going to do a sideways loft to go from one side to the other like that. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, cool. All right, so now's the moment of truth. Let's grab our loft tool. It's over here, right? I'm on the standard tab underneath the surface button is that, and then we'll go like one, okay? And we'll go two and we'll hit enter. All right. Very good. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Now this is a very important moment because you can see this, the, the look of the cutout here. And you can see how this line kind of arcs up like that. That's not really what we want. We want this to be kind of a flat line here. And only because I've practiced this a lot of times, I know that what's what the problem is is that we need to make this bottom curve a lot bigger. We need to scale it up. So, okay, so let's just get rid of this and just go again. And to scale it up, we'll use the gumball grab this guy like this and just widen it out, push it over, take a look at it, make sure that it's not inside the wall, it's sticking outside a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we're going to grab our loft tool again, and we'll go one, two. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Not exactly giving us exactly what we want. Let's play with a couple more things here. Let's push it out a little bit more and see what happens. And this is where we can get into the right mouse button and just reload the same tool. Hitting the right mouse button. 
Okay, now you can see how it's starting to flatten out there a little bit. Okay, so feeling good about that. Push it in a little bit. And just watch that control, um, watch this command line up here so that you know um, when the tool is loaded again. Okay, good. Almost there. Push this guy out a little bit. There's a lot of these sitting there, isn't there? Okay. Loft. Closer. Okay, getting closer. We need to... Um, move this guy forward a little bit there we go and just remember guys to um, make sure to hit both of these curves at just about the same position so if you're going if you're touching this curve in the center make sure to do the same down here as well go and you might need to rotate this guy a little bit and you're gonna have your own little situation depending on where and how to rotate these curves so don't be afraid if things don't go exactly how they go for me okay I'm feeling this one that one's getting there cancel move mine out and a little, little rotate down. Okay. Nope. Escape. Just hit the escape key if uh, you accidentally click something that you don't want to loft to. Um, and I'm just right mouse button connecting those two. Okay, I'm really close now. I'm just having to push this forward a little bit and then just rotate it just a little bit more. Okay. Feeling like I got to get it fast here. Come on. This time, be, be the winner. Okay. We're going to take that to the bank. Okay, cool. So what I'm looking for here is I'm trying to pay attention to um, the fact that this is starting to flatten out this shape here. I have a weird ripple right here, so I do. I want to make one more little move right now. I just want to take this guy like this, and I want to show the points, okay? And I want to take these like this and just push them a little bit forward. Okay. I'm trying to make the profile that's going to give me the shape that I want. Okay. And then I have to go and grab the loft tool again because I lost it. There we go. That's exactly what I'm looking for. It's flat-ish on the bottom, it's straight on the sides, and it also is arcing over to the side. So there we go. So what you're going to be learning in this exercise is how to lay out curves to um, intersect with the rest of your model to get a form that you're looking for. So this is a tricky little bit to 3D CAD that a lot of advanced users work on all the time. It's going to be annoying. That's just the name of the game. Try to get used to it. You know, I'm sitting here. It's early morning. I've got my cup of coffee and I'm, uh, I'm kind of in the right mood, I think, for uh, a tedious little activity like this. So you want to make sure you put yourself in that situation. Um, uh, at the right time and not like you know 10 minutes before your crit or whatever because you're gonna drive yourself nuts okay cool okay so once everything's looking like it's ready to go um, you, we're just gonna do some trim operations here but before I do that I want to do um, a polar array okay um, and a polar array is something we haven't done before so let me show you how it goes if you're looking at the uh, if you're looking at the water bottle cap, you'll notice that this section here goes all the way around. And there's about seven of them that rotate all the way around. I'm actually just going to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Um, and so Polar Array is the tool that we can use to duplicate this surface here and maneuver it around the model. In SolidWorks, okay, it's called the circular pattern. It operates a little bit different here in Rhino. and 
you're going to be learning both ways. So let's do it here in, um, in SolidWorks. Okay. I made one quick little maneuver there. I just took the gumball and just scaled this up a little bit. And you can do that. If you, after you make a surface, you can scale it up or down depending on, um, you know, whatever you think looks right. Um, just make sure that you give yourself some curve, some curves. Um, if you m move the surface off of the original guide curves, and then the way to do that is with the, um, it's it's with the uh, duplicate edge tool. This guy right here. So you can always take a surface that you've um, created or, or manually edited, grab the edge like this, okay, and then just go enter and just make yourself a new set of curves, okay. So I'm just going to take these curves here, all the curves for this guy, and save them. We'll just save them here on my curves layer. I still have the duplicate tool running. Oh, gasp. Sorry for this little back pedal on this maneuver. Change. Okay, cool. Save these on our extra curves layer. Okay, cool. Polar array. I swear we're going to do it now. Okay. Maybe a little sip of coffee, right? Okay. See this button here? Polar array. It's under the transform tab. And the way, the, the time to do the polar array is before you perform the trim operation when you have just your raw, um, we'll call this a construction surface, okay? Because it's the surface that's going to create the cut tool for our trim. So when you have drawn your straight construction surface, that's when you do your polar array. And it's going to be, uh, is it going to be tricky? I don't know if it's tricky or not. Let me show you how it works, okay? Turn on polar array. The command is select the objects you'd like to array. Select that one, hit enter. It's going to ask you for the center of the polar array. You can go to your top view and you can go grid snap and snap right onto the center. Or you can just hit the zero button and it'll put that point right at the zero. Once you hit enter, after setting the center of the array, it's going to ask you how many you want to array. And so you want to do more than two. So we're going to do seven. So just type a seven and hit enter. And then it's going to say, you know, how many degrees do you want to move around a circle? I think it comes preloaded as 360, but just for backup, I always like to type in the 360 just to feel good about myself. So I'll type 360 and I'll hit enter. And then you can see it move around in a circle like that. Looks cool, huh? Look at that. Like a ninja star. Fun. <sighs> Did it work? Okay. Press enter to accept. There you go. Cool. All right. So this gets complex quick, especially when you're doing multiple, um, you know, multiple units. So what I like to do at this point is um, I like to group all of the pieces together. So I'm just going to select them all and I'm going to hold down shift. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And um, escape, sorry. And then up here, we'll just type in group. Or we can just go to edit and go to group. Group. Perfect. And then just click on them again to make sure that they are one group. And then we're going to do the trim operation right now. So we're going to go to the trim tool. OK. And one thing to make sure of before we do this trim, just click on your actual, the body of your water bottle here. And just make sure that this bottom half is all knitted together into one piece or, or joined together into one piece. If not, make sure to do that first because you're going to want that. Okay, so trim, select the group. These are going to be your cutting object. Hit enter, zoom in. Maybe switch from shaded mode or from rendered mode to shaded mode just so you can see the wireframe. It makes it a little easier to click on at this point. And then just start trimming out these pieces one by one, round in a circle. Once you got them all, go ahead and just hit enter, okay? 
Very nice. Now we're going to run another trim, but we're going to use the body of the water bottle as the cutting object, and we'll trim off all these extra tails. Trim. Cutting object, this body. Object to trim. This, this. Go ahead and just get rid of each one. Voila. All right, and there we go. Feeling really nice about that. Check it out with your uh, rendered view. Nice and clean, okay? Now this took me quite a few tries, guys, before I got to the point where we had nice clean surfaces in here. I had a, a couple of different ideas on how to build these surfaces in here. One was to span curves going from the top to the bottom and then some sort of network surface in there, but the, the surfaces always got really heavy. So doing a nice loft from the top to bottom uh, gives us a really clean situation in there. Okay. So there you go. That is how to make those side cuts. Now they are raw edges right now, so we want to add some fillets to that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's just bust out the fillet tool. Here she is. Okay, and you'll notice right away that you have to group the new surfaces to the rest of the body in order for the fillet tool to work. Okay, there is the fillet surface command, which you could use to fillet unjoined edges, but we're going to go ahead and go through the trouble of joining these together first. So grab your join tool, select all these bits, hold down the shift button if you need to, to select everything as one. Rotate this around in a circle. Hit enter when you're finished. Check it by just clicking on the item. And then you can always click right up here in this command line here with your right mouse button to get a list of the last 20 object or last 20 tools you used. The variable rate fitted fillet is right there. The radius that we're gonna want to do is probably something tiny, like uh 0.5 maybe. And if you get this situation here where it only wants to grab part of the edge, you can always hit chain edges and then just rerun the tool. Hit chain edges first and see if that works for you. It might work. Okay. 0.5. Okay. It does create kind of an ugly fillet. 0.5 seems to be a little bit big for my liking. I'm going to run that again with a point. Two five and see how that looks. Okay, this is a chain edges situation for sure. There we go, chain edges. It's still even with chain edges on, it still doesn't want to grab the whole thing. Okay, and we'll just check for a rendered mode. Okay, that looks good. Good enough. Okay, so unfortunately we're gonna have to go around and do that for each edge, so just bear with me while I do that. I'm gonna hit the right mouse button, and, or I'm just gonna grab variable rate fit it, fill it, chain edges. Now, in all honesty, guys, as a as a as a tried and tested SolidWorks user, I get a little uh, cranky in situations like this because this is really where SolidWorks comes into it comes in handy as far as doing multiple iterations of something, um, like a fillet on a you know circular pattern um, or on a polar array. Um, is a little bit easier to to work a situation like this in in a program like SolidWorks, and you'll see why after we get into the tutorials on on that program. Um, but it is you know part of the process of learning to um, work both programs is is kind of going through this 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 part of the uh, <laughs> of the build. Oh God, there you go. 
I'm really paying attention to this command line here as I try to reload the tool onto my cursor because um, I want to make sure not to fire off the wrong command by accident and then mess up my model. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, now when you get to be a more advanced user, there are um, some tricks that you can perform in order to avoid stuff like this. See how this fillet comes along and it kind of it kind of gets larger around this corner and then it dives down and gets smaller around this corner. Um, there's This would be a situation where you could really get into some complex surfacing to get a clean, um, consistent edge around here. But since we're just learning the program, this kind of thing's okay. And since this is just going to be a looks like model right now, it's not going to be too big of a deal. So uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, switch over to rendered mode here really quick to take a look at our, our work. And I'm feeling really happy about that. Okay. Okay, so this is the part where we're going to save our work. File save because we've done a lot of stuff. Okay, let's just go ahead and go over to our curves thing and just make sure, okay, we do have these curves here for when we need them. And we've even got a backup set of curves in case we want to run those later. Um, things that could happen with this design in the real world, you could hear from a boss or from a client, oh, these cuts are too deep or we want them to look different or something like that. And in that case, you're going to need to go back to this set of curves. And it's going to be vital to have these curves ready to rerun another loft command. Um, so make sure you've got those in hand as you do your save. Okay. And we're moving right along on this uh, on this video, guys. This is uh, this is probably going to be the second to last video for this. The next couple maneuvers we have to make, we got to make some part lines, we got to make some accent cuts. Um, but then down here on the bottom, we're just going to leave all of this filled in. And um, the reason for that is because, again, like I said, this is just a looks like you know concept model. We don't have to do any of the engineering or anything like that and that's uh, what would happen as we hand off the, the design to an engineer. So um, if you've made it this far, good job. Save your work. Uh, I'll see you in the next one where we're just gonna finalize a couple more details as far as just uh, softening up this top bit here. But pretty happy with this design so far. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, talk to you later.